Lexi Ortiz. Hi, I'm Lexi Ortiz, and I am not a doctor, but I am at least as qualified as Oprah to talk to you about vaccines today. Um, if you're interested in more information about vaccines from actual doctors, I have a list of resources up on my blog at skepticalmom.com. So let's start with, do vaccines cause autism? The short answer to that question is no. This idea was pushed into the mainstream in 1998 when Andrew Wakefield published a paper claiming to find a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Incidentally, Andrew Wakefield has since lost his license to practice medicine in the UK, and that paper was retracted by the Lancet where it was published. Um, further research has shown there is no link between the MMR vaccine and autism. But the damage was done. MMR uptake dropped, and measles is now endemic in the UK again. Around that same time, some scientists at the FDA were concerned about a preservative called thimerosal, which contains ethyl mercury. Ethyl mercury was not well understood at the time, but going on the EPA's recommendation for allowable levels of methyl mercury, the decision was made to remove ethyl mercury from all childhood vaccines by 2001. Well, it turns out that thimerosal wasn't all that dangerous and it's not linked to autism. After it was removed from the vaccines, autism rates continued to climb. <clears throat> So there are still vaccine denialists out there who keep moving the goalposts, demanding impossible studies or saying that it's too many too soon or attacking other vaccine ingredients. So what are these vaccine ingredients that are so scary sounding and why are they there? Well, first let's talk a little bit about how vaccines are made. An antigen is grown in some kind of medium. In the case of viral vaccines, it has to be grown in live cells. It's then killed or attenuated with, um, <clears throat> with formaldehyde. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and adjuvants are added to enhance the immune response. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. <laughs> the most common types of adjuvants are, um, are aluminum salts. Now, some people are worried about this being too much exposure to aluminum for children receiving vaccines. But aluminum is the most abundant metal on Earth, and you're exposed to more of it by breathing the air and drinking the water than you are from vaccines. Those uh, animal cells that are used to culture the viruses for vaccines are removed before vaccines are produced, and the amount of formaldehyde in a vaccine is much lower than what is naturally found in your body. Now, graphs like these are used to um, to show that vaccines are somehow not effective by demonstrating that the death rates were declining before vaccines were introduced due to things like better hygiene and nutrition. But if we look at the incidence of disease, it is clear that when a vaccine is licensed, the incidence of that disease drops dramatically. And this is true of all vaccine preventable diseases. Two really great examples of vaccines working are the global eradication of smallpox in 1979 and the ongoing effort to eradicate polio through global vaccine, vaccine administration. Now, polio is still endemic in four countries, so that's ongoing. Um, and on the flip side of that argument, if you look at Haemophilus influenza B and chickenpox vaccines, which were introduced in the 80s and 90s, the incidence of those diseases has gone down as well, which can't really be attributed to better hygiene or nutrition. So if they're so rare, why do we need to vaccinate against these diseases? Well, they are rare here in the United States, but are still endemic in other parts of the world, and new cases can always be imported by unvaccinated people. Another important thing is herd immunity. The more people in a community who are vaccinated, the fewer people there are to spread a disease if somebody is exposed. This protects vulnerable groups like cancer patients, people on immunosuppressant drugs, and babies. Still, there are people who prefer the natural immunity of disease to the artificial immunity of vaccines. While it's true that vaccine immunity does wane over time, natural immunity wanes too. Before vaccines, people were just constantly re-exposed to diseases, which acted as a booster for the immune system. So when you're thinking about vaccines, it's really important to weigh risks versus benefits. 
The risks from vaccines are very, very tiny compared to the risk of dying from smallpox or measles. Vaccines have saved millions of lives and continue to save millions of lives as we use them. Thank you for your time. Again, if you are interested in more information, I have a list up at skepticalmom.com. Thank you.